We do appreciate all that Yah does for his nation, his people. Gathers us on his beards, his bosom of refreshing, and he lomad, he teaches us his wisdom by instruction of his counsel by wise men. I'm so glad that there are some that are wise. I don't want to be the wisest of men because Shalomo, he found himself. In a tremendous quick mire. So there must be those that are wise among us. and Those that are capable and have strength. They exemplify the beauty of Yan Yoshua. Their character must personify. By evidence of what Torah says. And that their lives and the pattern of their lives are according the simplicity of Torah. We greet you all our friends. We appreciate you kind ones, your generosity, your gifts of great help. We appreciate that. Our friends, whoever you are, our enemies as well, we love you all. We lack enemies because you make me strong. We want to greet our Ahot Sylvia there in in California as well as our Ach Felix there in Oklahoma. Such a span with Yah's people there everywhere. All over this nation. So we greet you, your kindness, your great generosity, our Ach, our Zachin, Tayonia there in Memphis, Tennessee. Very kind to us. And Zachin Davis there in, in California as well. We greet you, our Ach Kessner, your precious Isho, Hotana, you there in the Florida Tampa region, you that are preparing for the great gathering with our Zachin Yaramiya that will be in Jacksonville, Florida soon. So we greet you all that will hear this broadcast and whatever stream that Yah allows you to hear it. We do greet you all in Yahshua's mighty name and me. His wisdom fill your mind with great delight. I, I like children because it is the simplicity of things that they say, I'm sorry, Sipora. Today she thought that everything she did in the dining hall, she touching me and laughter beyond the ability to contain. But to her, it was beautiful. And that's all right. I'll let her do that. I like that. I want to teach tonight. I said to my Zachim, I don't feel like it. And I know that our Zachim, Yaramaya, is tired, the labor, the Achim, and we appreciate their labor and all that they do. But I want to teach tonight the simplicity. And I want to teach from this morning's prayer when the Sipura. She was singing a song. And of course, we all know the song, but we don't know it. She was singing, Order my steps in your Torah, dear Yah. And I say, Yah, do we even understand that? Do we understand what Yah implies when David cried with such great fervor? Always say that the book of Tehillim and Yacharan, these are the two most beautiful writings, and all of them are equal, but in the sense of a true benevolence and a great love, is one of great benevolence, of love, and is one that, as the old ones would say, it was a feeling. It was a heartfelt feeling. Sincerity, And I find that with David's, and I find that with the Yachahan, the writings of the renewed covenant, the Brit Hadassah, you find that great intimacy. It's like a man, when he loves his wife, that he is not afraid to open his heart. He can share all things with her because he has confidence in her. It's the same thing with a wife, an issue that a heart 
It's beautiful, it is innocent, it is pure, it is clean. And then her husband safely trusts in the integrity of her life. And so I garnered that from the writings of Tehelia and also from the writings of Yakahanan. But as I listened to the child this morning, the repetitiveness of her singing, she was not concerned about the harmonizing and how she sound like we are. She just sing. As the Torah would call, Shiram, the Shir. And songs can only come because they're great delight in one's bosom. Because the heart has the Shem Cha, the great, the great joyfulness of Yah that flows from one's bosom. And so if there is nothing there, nothing will come out. One doesn't delight in Yah, you're not going to find nothing. So as I listened to her sing, I wanted to jump up and run to the house and began to search Torah. I listened to words, Yisrael. We try to listen to a combination of words and conclude what is. I listen to the singularity of words, each word. Because every word that Yah speaks is pure. Therefore, his servants, his evadim, those that serve him, they trust, they botak, they trust in his Torah. And so I want to begin tonight from the heart of this child, Sipora. She was singing from Tehelium. There are two aspects of this. I'll have time to deal with one some other time. Do not charge me to keep what I say, all right? I'm somewhat unfaithful in that, all right? So there are two matters of the scripture that are both equally valid and important. To Helium 119, verse 133, David uses a word in the Aramaic or the Hebraic language. It's almost like the sound of the word, and it is spelled the same way in the south, the north, east, and west. When they would see one that was of the dark hue of the diaspora, they would call them, look at that coon. You are with me. So he began to cry unto Yah. There are words that have great value and importance. It's simply that people did not and do not understand what they are saying. You spell that C-O-O-N. You spell it of the forefathers way K O O. In. It's different from K O O M, kum and kun. So he cries unto Yah. He asks him to order, to kun, order my steps. He asks the Abad to establish him. That's what kun is, to establish me, Yah. To cause the dynamics of your word, your Torah, to make my mind, my desire, my passion, my will stable. And Yah would stabilize him. And not only that, but give him the strength and the power to endure the battles against his enemies, the foes of his, uh, of his great kingdom. And so he began this great deliberation with Yah. He said, Kun. Establish order. And then he implies what he wants Yah to order. He says, uh, my steps, my fi'am, my steps. Order my steps, almighty Yah. My fi'am. Is that literally his steps of his feet? Sure it is. But it's the course of his life. It's the will of his life and the purpose that his life is manifested for. So he cried to Yah to Kun Feham to order my steps. Where? How can his steps be ordered? How are our lives ordered? 
that we walk circumspectly before Yah, and then there is a great delight to obey the commands, the mitzvah of Yah. It must be ordered. Mahis Dabarim, the Torah, his promises unto Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. It must be ordered, Yisraya, by his Imra, the spoken power of Torah. So we must have men that can deliberate out of Torah. He uses the words Imra, order my steps. Yodabarim, the promises of Torah. What you have uttered unto Moshe, he uttered the Torah. He uttered his dabarim, his promises unto Abraham. So the cry was to establish, secure, make my course right, yeah, by Torah. It can only come no other way but that way. And there are things in Torah that we don't like. It is displeasing. We don't care for it, but this is how our lives find the security and the stability that we need. This is a crazy, wicked generation. We can't discern not one iota of anything. It's a foolish generation. Silly women, immature men. There are things that people say, I don't even dignify a fool. You understand? I won't even dignify a fool. You talk like a fool, I won't even dignify your speech. And that's a fact. So he commands, so he utters unto your oracle, my steps. Why? Because that is the sure way. Unless our steps are ordered in Torah, we're going to fall. We're not going to stand with the strength of a gebel or a mighty warrior that defends truth. And we wonder why we not fall, we miss the mark, we do not proceed in the course. Why? Because it is not Yah that ordering your steps. Not at all. It is not Torah that orders our steps. I'm glad the child was singing the song because I couldn't wait. I got home at the prayer and opened up the book. Couldn't wait until I got back from breakfast. Sit down a little bit, did a little this, did a little that. Sit down a little bit, waited a little bit until I found the significance of the song. Order my steps in your Torah, dear young. And then above all that he says, and... Let not any or vain, any perverse verbiage, actions, ways, activities. Uh, he said, let not any iniquity, uh, he said, have this kind of sholat, domineering power that consume me, that has power over me. Let not any iniquity, any, not some. See, it's one thing about this generation. It doesn't see its own iniquity. You can tell when one is iniquitous. You find someone that say that they have the Ruach. You may have the damn Holy Ghost. But you don't have the Ruach of Yah. That's a fact. And yet their actions and their activities are not according to Torah. You correct a wise man, he loves you. You speak to a fool, you get a blot. And I give a damn who you are. You can't correct a fool. Fact. And so when our iniquity began to permeate in our mind, the Torah says we're in a time because of him shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. Uh, they shall have no love. Come on, don't be silly. I can tell love when someone has that genuineness of pure love in their heart, that damnable, false, idolatrous self, grandizing thing they call love. I love everybody. You're a liar. You don't even know how to love your children. You don't know how to love your husband. You don't even know how to love your man. Your husband, man, stop the lying. You sense this unnatural, unconnected consciousness, which is not of Yah, because Yah would tell you. 
You know, it's one thing that Shaul, he talks about the Ruach in Galatians 5, doesn't he? The fruit of the Ruach, love, joy. Hell, you tell me you got the Ruach and you have no joy in you? You're a damn liar. You're a silly man. You're a silly, floozy woman. And that's a fact, whether you buy it or not. He called them, first of all, old foolish Galatians, didn't he? They thought they had something. This is a foolish generation. They think, nobody's right. Oh, then I know you're not right. Hallelujah. That's the truth. So our minds must be secured in Torah. We must not allow any iniquitous, perverse activities to have its sholats. It is what dominates us. It has power over us to cause our minds to be moved away from Torah because our ways, our mind is ordered by Torah. It is kun. That's what gives us security and establish us, make us firm. That's what does that. So it must be ordered. It must be ordered by Yah. And let not any iniquity have any rule over me that it has no mastery. It doesn't, Lord, it doesn't dominate over you. You can tell a pear tree, I can, from a plum tree by the fruit. You will know what one has by their fruits. And that's a fact. Period. You, you know, we have missed Yah so much and so far. I was speaking to one one day and I said, you know, in the old whorehouses, whether it was Church of God, the apostolic, the mothers with Rome and correct this one and correct that one. That's fact. I can tell them you stop it and rebuke that one. They would do it. You can rebuke this crazy generation today. That's fact. You can't tell them anything. And they would do that. Baby, you get up and you get on fire for the Lord. Sure they would. This stupid generation. As a young man, I would look at that. And you could see those that had a sincere, even though an ignorance, a motive to do right. He asked you to order, first of all, his steps. Order my steps, Yah. Secure my steps. I watch Yah as he begins to become secure in his walk. There were times he wasn't secured. And so he had to develop the confidence in his ima, his avat. And he trusted their speech, their imra, come, and put him down. And, and he was standing rock and dropped to the ground because he was sure of his steps. Then as he began to trust that, he began to move a little closer. And the closer he got as his steps were ordered by the imra, by your word, Yah, the imra, they uttered it unto him. And he began to believe that law in his bosom. Even as a babe, he began to hear that law. He began to understand that law, and he began to walk. And once he began to walk, you can't tell him anything. He doesn't want you to hold him now. He wants to walk. Once we begun to allow this Torah of Yah to dominate, then our own iniquity will not dominate. It will not, Sholat, be domineering over us. You see, that's the thing that's domineering over us. Our own iniquity. Order my steps. I'm glad you were singing that little one this morning. In your Torah, day, yeah, teach me, got me everywhere. They order my steps. Yeah. Hallelujah. Our steps. What does that imply and what does it consist of? Well, I want to remind us of our uh, one of the most prominent writers of the Torah, David. He was a melach. And a melach is a king. A melach is a messenger. One that administered the government of Yah. Something is wrong when this wicked generation cannot see the Sadiq. When your eyes are blinded with the Torah calls the words Iv, Ivra. Ivra. The blindness of one's own sin. We cannot see the kind deeds and the actions of others. You're twisted in your damn mind. I don't give a damn who it is. You're twisted. 
This is what David says here. He says in Tehillim 18.35, and he's cried unto you to give him great kabot, honor. For what? For all of the great things that Yah had done for him. There's nothing more beautiful when you can appreciate one. I appreciate Yisrael. I'm not going to do you wrong, man. That's a fact. You do me wrong before I do you wrong. That's a fact. And so David cries unto Yah for all of the great things. And he woke me up this morning. And he started me on. That's enough. So he cries here in Telium Psalms 1835. He says to Yah, you have also given me the shield of your Yoshua, your Yoshak, your deliverance. He has Nathan. He has bestowed that upon his nation. The shield of deliverance. How by his Torah. He says, in your right hand, your shoe sits at the right hand. He is the heart of your, he says, and your right hand has support. Or it has been the supports that has lifted me. And then he says, he used the word, uh, your gentleness, your humbleness. You tell me, yes, humble. And he rebukes us and damn our children and damn you. He says, your gentleness has made me great. You see, that's what makes one great. When they're gentle and sweet and kind. You can see, not this damnable, superficial thing they call kindness. He said, your humbleness, your, that's what makes us great. Because he is kind to us. He says, uh, this is what he says to Helium 1836. He says, you have enlarged. You have enlarged my, he uses the word sa'ad. You have enlarged my step. He said, you have enlarged the course of my life. You hear that vernacular in the secular sense uh, that I live large, baby. I live large. I've heard that. Although I'm not a part of that genre of speech, uh, I I've heard that before. And so he says, you have sa'at. You have made my life what? That's what the Torah does. It makes our steps. It order our steps to make our lives wide and productive. Whereby there is zeal, there is a zealousness for the imrat, for the hearing of your Torah. For what? To correct me. To musa, to rebuke, to counsel me. That's what... He says, yeah, you have enlarged my sa'at, the course of my life, my steps under me, that my feet did not even, I did not slip, I did not teeter, I did not take a chance, I did not say whether I would, because when he began to coon, he secured us. He established us. He makes us stronger. And it's only by Torah. It's only by the Imra, the hearing of the utterance. That's why he says, order my steps in your Imra, in your Torah, in the hearing of your Torah, in the hearing of your correction. Order my steps. We hear every kind of corrupt, damnable sound. But what Yah speaks. We hear our own iniquity, our own, own Ovin talking to us uh, and telling me I'm right. You are wicked. Because if you're that right, you got that kind of zeal, that kind of blossoming uh, of this great light, uh, then you will get the beam out of your own eye. And then you'll see the motive of your ach, your team, you silly, simple one. Yeah, when a man gets the beam of his eye, he can help anybody. I don't respect anyone that's wicked. I will show you where Yah says don't even help the wicked. Don't even help sinners, I'm telling you. It's in the book. We don't know what this thing says. Because we don't care for it. You like Walmart and Dollar Mart. You like to sit around and do nothing. You don't do a damn thing. How can... A woman say she loves Yah because when you go by a wise woman's house, a house is in order, everything is laid out, it's clean, it's spartan. She's a liar. 
And I, you women get upset when I say that, but I don't give a damn. You go by ladies at heifer's house, she's not even a heifer, she's a cow. She's been hind. And the house is filthy, it stinks, it's all cluttered. Something is wrong there. And you don't even judge yourself to say I'm a slothful, wicked thing. This preacher doesn't give a damn about this wicked world. See, he cursed. No, I said I don't give a damn. I, I close it off. I do, my friend. Well, well that's, that's not in it added plus to my life because that he said that, that his feet almost slipped and yet, yeah, they're not allowed that. We must have the same persuasive power as this man. We must allow our minds to be ordered into Ra. And we must be persuaded that nothing will separate us. And in that persuasion, we will have the patience to endure. We will settle ourselves down by Torah. We will allow the Torah to settle our minds. And that's what we will do. Davi gives us a great narrate here in Tehillim 37. Tehillim 37 verse 23, I want to begin reading. He begins to understand the very nature of Yah's Sadiqah, his righteousness according to Torah. He began to understand his own ways that how they infringed upon Torah. It is your iniquity that draw you down into the slate of darkness where you cannot see any light. And so he cries here in Psalms 37, 23. He says the steps. He says the steps. He says of a valiant or a geber, a righteous, a valiant warrior, they are ordered by Almighty Yah. I'm glad he got warriors. I'm glad he got warriors. He ordered their steps. I'm a warrior. He came the day I was planting. Great smile on his face. So he said, you're a soldier, man. Well, he didn't say that because he saw me working, but can I tell you this? See, I see beyond the verbiage. He realized that this man had to get up. He's out here. He's rolling this early. He knew what time he had to get up to come down here. So that you, that's just not because he saw me working. He said, man, this man was up. He takes care of this. He takes care of that. He do this. He does that. And yet he's out here. Nobody with him. And nothing is slowing him down, but he's rolling. That's why he said I'm a soldier. Hallelujah. So this man is up. He knew he had to get up. It's a fact. And I said to his boy, Baba, you make sure you take care of him. You make sure you do it right down there. I got collard greens for you. How about that? That's why he said it, because he knew that I had to get up. That's why praying woman, she's up. She prays a man that loves Yah, he prays. We don't give a damn about that. That's just a fact. He said, the steps of a mighty warrior, one, a, a, a warrior, they are ordered by Yah. He says, and Yah delights in that mercy. One that is wicked will not delight in the ways of a righteous man. Oh, he is not right. They are not right. She is not right. Well, what about the virtuous woman? Is she right? Yah orders a valiant warriors. He orders the Geba, the warriors that stand for righteousness. I will say, damn you, you wicked one. Shut your wicked mouth, man. Woman, I rebuke you. It's a fact. So Yah orders his steps. He ordains his life. He ordains the course. And he's strong too. He's very strong. He listens to babies sing. And see the power of the elements that the child sings. We hear it, but we don't examine it. Just like we don't examine our own damn wicked hearts. See, I examined, I was excited. That little baby singing like that. That's all right. I'll preach it. How about that? Yah delights in that man's ways. You can't delight. Yah delights. He have faith. He have great pleasure in the way of that man. So you tell me there are none that are like that today. But it says that. Yah delights in his ways. He delights in his way. In his way. 
He says, though he fall, not fall, though he fall prostrate, though he doesn't possess the strength, though his heart is troubled, that doesn't mean he falls, not fall, doesn't mean he falls into sin, doesn't mean that the righteous man fall into sin seven times. We've been taught that by the tradition of men. He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. He shall not fall prey to sin. He shall not give himself over unto iniquity and ovine. He will not give himself over unto corruption. Why? For almighty Yahweh stands him up, orders him up, holds him in the power of his Yoshua Hamashiach. He upholds him by the words, and the Torah was made. It was Barah. Created and made flesh. He upholds a warrior like that. Why was David crying and talking like this? Because of his enemies, his Oye. He was kind to them and they were still his enemies. Let's kill him. He's not right. But his steps were ordered by Yah. This is a generation you don't, you can't, they don't know what kindness is. But yet they think they're spiritual. They don't know what joy is. The word zim, zim ra, it means to, I can show you because I'm a student of words. It means to act mad like a damn fool. It means to act like that, to cut up. It means to run cut up like a fool. So your daughters, if you see someone not doing it right, you tell them, lift your hands and praise you. I don't give a damn who it is. It's right to tell them that. That's right, mama. Hallelujah. Well, that's not important to me. Well, can I show you what's important to me? David, he, he spoke everything he said was important, wasn't it? I read this. Then I tell you where it's at. Hear this. He talks about a class of people. He calls them the Sadiqim or the righteous. He says the Sadiqim, the righteous, shall inherit the land. And they're going to dwell therein. How long? He says, Li Olam, forever. Throughout futuristic antiquity, no measure of time. He's talking about the Sadiqim, the righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. It says the fifth, the mouth of the righteous man, it speaks the hukma. It speaks what's written in the Torah. It speaks the experience of Torah. There's nothing more beautiful than that. For a man or woman speaks the beauty of Torah. And they share that not only in their verbiage, but in their action. Their activities. Your words... Don't meet a damn thing unless there's there are actions there. For Yah so love, will show me your love, Yah, that He gave His prize integrity. He put His word up against everything. He put it up against you that you fight against it, you lie against it, you speak against it, you speak against the messengers, the people of Yah. You're wicked. I don't give a damn who you are. You're a wicked man. You're wicked, immature, effeminate man. You're wicked, Jezebel. I don't give a damn. That's the spirit of Isabel. You don't speak against Yah's heritage. I don't give a damn if you don't understand. You don't have to understand. Just shut your mouth. And just make sure you're right. Hallelujah. See, the mouth of a righteous one speaks wisdom, and his tongue always talks, talks of judgment. Now, do we talk of judgment? Come on, someone judge us. I'm talking like this, and I intend to rip your wicked head off. The next time, I will identify whomever you are in here. I'm not a coward, and I'm not afraid of anyone leaving me because he's going to order my steps. This is what he says to Yah. He says, Torah, the Torah of Yah is in the righteous man's life. 
none of his assure, the sure way to walk, none of his steps, none of his steps shall slide. All of my steps in your Torah, dear, I don't even have nothing for you tonight. Take that boy and take that girl and give her an apple or something. What's her name? When Dooley, when they find out what was wrong with his mama, she said, boy, come here, just give me a hug. Oh, Dooley say, no, I don't want that. Don't even have nothing for you. The Helium Psalms 37, 29 through 31, verse 31 says, the Torah of Yah is in that righteous man's hearts. He uses the word non, N-O-N-E, lu, in the Hebraic tongue. When Yah says no, not one, none, he means absolutely not. It's no chance. It is beyond the possibility. He says none. 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 None of his assure shall slide. None of his steps. His course of life, he will not slide backwards from Yah. As he proceeds through life, he will not go away from Torah. As he understands the dynamics of life, the challenges and the great uh, battles of life, uh, not one of his steps will slide away from Yah. Yah upholds that man with his right hand. He may not be the brightest, he may not be the wisest uh, in what we call intellectual matters, uh, but his heart has been established uh, by the Torah. And not one step is gone. You, you cannot dismantle the Torah. So I'm glad that there are some Sadiq men. Even David said, my foot nearly slept. And so he went back to Torah. I don't care what the course, that sometimes you may have this sense of, of juvenile activities. You go back to the Torah. I don't care what your battle is, you go back to the Torah. I don't care what you strive, you go back to the book. You go back to the Torah. I don't care what the difficult, go to the Torah. We do everything but that. We do everything. You see, when one is righteous, uh, the wisdom of that one always talks of judgment. So if one says to one, you're wrong, uh, one says that's right. I don't care how right you think you are, you're wrong. So anytime the Torah is spoken, it speaks of you. You ain't got a damn thing. If you did, everyone would see it. When you got something, a pretty woman, she knows she's pretty. A man that is of strength and beautifully handsome, he knows it. He doesn't need to boast, he knows it. He knows his masculinity, his physicality, he knows it. It's only those that are not sure, they, they have to promote them. I don't have to do that. My steps are ordered, I'm a warrior. The same thing with the daughter of Tezayon. See, everything that anyone says to her, her is pure. To the pure, all things are pure. To those that are defiled and unbelieving, there's nothing pure. But they will say, you are defiled, man. Now nah, you're defiled. He orders the steps of a Sadiq man. He makes his assure, uh, his course of life, uh, his, his mandate in life. He makes it whereby it's sure. This book is right. It's right. You can't go around. The Torah of Yah is in his heart. Now what's in your heart? You tell me the Torah? Don't lie to me. Your damn heart is far from the Torah. It's about eating fat back and chitlins and cornbread with cauliflowers, forgive me, collard greens and ham hocks. We eat every kind of damn double filthy thing there is. We don't dine on this Torah. That's why we could say, feed me until I want no more. He knew that there was no excessive of eating of Torah. He knew that the emptiness of his life and the battles that, that he encountered were never, that, that he could hear this all day and every day. And his resource that he drew from, not because uh, he was a king, uh, because there were times that Davi was weak uh, and he damn near fell because he got his eyes off Torah. That's why we need all men that are strong in their, in their countenance, uh, emulate the power of Torah, the expression, the facial attributes, uh, express the dynamics and the power of Torah. Yeah. Yeah. 
And some of us, our countenance is just, it is almost ingrained. So when you work on your children, you work on you. I don't like silly children and smart mouth children. I don't like them now. I don't like that. I don't care whose youngins, whose child it is. I don't like it. I don't like them. Because I was taught as a child. What, you know, it's amazing. When I was three or four years old, five years old, I knew what I could get by with. And you couldn't get by with nothing. You couldn't get by with dishonor. You couldn't get by. You didn't even walk up to adults any kind of way. You didn't do it. Yeah. I know it's no way, man. Yeah. Couldn't do it. You stood back. Unless they bid you, you shut your mouth and you were quiet. Well, that's not enough to make us faithful with y'all. Can I, can I proceed a little bit? Okay, then. I'll tell you where this is, all right? David speaks of the great imuna, the imun, the faithfulness of Almighty Yah here in Tehillim 44, 17. And if he is able to fulfill all that he says. So in the process of his utterance, he says in verse 17... He says, Yisraya, the nation, all this is come upon us. We've had trials and great agony and great battles and great trials. He said, yet have we not forgotten you, Yah. Yeah. So you don't forget, Yah, I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what. You don't blanket judge no one. If you're wicked, you're wicked. Just say, I'm wicked. He says, uh. Yet we have not forgotten you. He said, neither have we dealt falsely with your bread, your covenant, your obligations because of your allegiance with me, because I am betrothed unto you. And then when the fullness of time shall come, when you are sure enter into us in the fullness of the power of Yah, because he gave every one of us the Ruach by measure. He gave him the Ruach without measure. And then shall we be the precious bride of Almighty Yah. Do you all hear that? He says, our love, our minds, our labor, our hearts, uh, to Helium 4480. Our heart is not turned back. Neither, neither have our steps Declined from the way of your Torah, from your Derek. Our lives are consistent with it. We struggle in our battles, but the wicked can see our lives are consistent with the constitution of your Torah. You are wicked, man. Woman, uh, your life is not consistent with Torah. I like the way this man talks. I greet you, my Aquim, you and the whole Tiffany. You all warm my mind. I'm glad that you all wrote to me. You all need to write more often. I'm taking so long. Hallelujah. They warm my mind last week and the week before last, and they wrote, emailed us. They're well. Yabra. I had to get that in, all right. Our heart has not turned back. Neither have our uh, assure our steps. Decline from your direct, your way. What is the way of Yah? His Torah is the way. My way seems right unto me, but the end thereof is death. What death? It is my death. We prematurely die. We remove our minds away from Yah. That's what we do. Our hearts are moved away from Yah. So we turn our hearts away from Torah. We don't want to hear Torah. We don't want to hear the Musa, the counsel of Yah's correction. We don't want to hear the discipline of Yah. We don't want to want to discipline us because we're arrogant. We're self-consuming. You don't have a damn thing. Your visage doesn't show the very change of Yah. People think because if they come here, they sit down at the table with me. I, I, I'm nothing. So you sit with me doesn't mean a damn thing. You understand? That's why I don't like for people to do that. And they think some way they give them an entrance or, or some kind of open door that they're going to be, they were different. You're a fool. I don't, that's why I, I don't, what I, I love to be close to all Israel. Yeah, that folks I don't like you close to because they're crazy. I love y'all's people. How do I love you? Because come on. For a child to awaken my heart this morning, she, she's, not, she's not bloating in any grandeur because I said that. Her mind is not even thinking about me. 
But we think we are someone special. We think we got something that others don't have. You got sin. You got corruption. And when I leave from here, I may even... Uh, could I proceed a little further? Our hearts are not turned back. Neither have our steps declined from your way. Order my steps in your Torah, dear Yahweh. Teach me. Guide me every day. Senor, I pray, oh yeah. That's all right, little one. I owe you one, all right? That's the truth. Why not? Hallelujah. David speaks of an encounter in the midst of all of his great agony and trials and temptations that come against him. He had nothing to rely upon but the course of Torah. So in the midst of that, he began to echo from his heart unto Yah, that the Melchim, the messengers of heaven, could hear him. And these are the words of, uh, out of his mouth here in Tehillim 73, verse 1. He says, Truly, O oh, truly, Yah is tough to Yisrael. He said, Yah is tough to his nation. He did not just say Yah, he said, Truly. Truly. There's no injustice in him. He's going to judge us. And we need those to judge us. Yeremiah says, correct me, Musa, counsel me in your judgment, Yah. And not in your anger, your earth. And least I enter, I come bold to low, to nothing. That's right. He says, truly Yah is tough to Yisrael, even to such as are of a bar, a clean, sincere, of a pure love. So you tell me that no one has a pure love? If it's just one of you all in here has a pure love tonight, then yeah, I will ride your coattail, all right? Yeah. This is a wicked generation. I won't even speak against those that left me. What they did for us here, we enjoy that today. Your father died what your mother gave. It benefited. He told her what to do because he told me what he told her what to do. Never said that to you. It's a fact. So everyone, whatever they've given has benefited. You have benefited from it. Because without them giving their labor, then maybe the dining hall will not be as nice. We will not have the monies. Maybe we can't gather and, and commune with each other, and have fellowship, and take our babies to little places. Hallelujah. Everything Emma Sabel gives, she doesn't say, well, I, I want to take that. No. You take that. And I'll take the rest and we'll use it. She's never rose up against that. You'll say she's wicked and her funds help all of us. Sure they do. Listen to what that weed says. Truly, Yah is tough to Yisrael. Even that is such of a clean heart. Well, someone has to have a clean heart. He said, but as for me, my feet, they were almost gone. My steps had well come close, that close to slipping. Why? He said, because I was envious. I was envious of the evil of the foolishness. When I saw how the wicked had cars and, and nice clothing, what I thought. Uh, he said, I damn near turned away from Torah. Yeah, I said, like that. You began to watch the wicked and see what they're doing. You began to talk and you chit chat. That's all you talk to, to the wicked. You don't talk to no one righteous. That's what your conversation, you're calling this one. Uh, uh, like uh, Akshimri said, talk, 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 talk. 
You don't want to talk to the righteous. You don't want no one with a clean heart around you because they're tell you wicked woman. Man, you need to get right. You talk to the wicked. Come on, I don't talk to the wicked. I don't talk to my relatives. I don't talk to my brothers. I don't talk to my sister. We have nothing in common. I just don't. I feel uncomfortable. That's me. Now you can go on. I don't do it. I already talked to Shimri. I had Lucero. I had to bring my water yesterday. And of course, she was in there. She says, I weigh 65 pounds. And of course, she was working out. She said, now I weigh 45. I said, girl, you of course, I told her to go home, but I said, no, she's hitting it too hard. So I said, Shimmy, she took your seat, man. She messed your bike, man. That's you. So she says to me, Poppy, I want to work out with you. I said, well, I work out with Shimmy. That's my boy. I like working out with him. She said, well, when he's not here, you call me. You have me to bring you water, and I'll come, and we'll work out. I said, baby girl, uh, yeah. She said, well, I'll work out with you and Shimri then. Oh, Shimri. I said, well, I, said, I like working out with Shimri. We get intense in here. We get a little crazy. So. so she jumps over there on that pull down. She put 20 pounds on there. I said, look, girl, baby, you can't do that. And she pulls it down. Boom, 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 boom. So she goes on the pec squeeze, and she drops it down to 200 pounds for me. She said, can you do that? I said, no, I can't do that. Let's put it right here. And I worked, with, I worked my way all the way down to 180. I said, no, nah, I haven't done this in a long time. But you could just see she was sweating. She jumped on everything. She's pulling up. And she, and she was serious. She said, Poppy, we work out together. I said, well, look, girl, the way you're working out, we're walking down like Shimri and I. We're going to walk down together to prayer. You just stay with me and work out with me. How about that? And that, for that child, she was so animated, so the word of Yah, it doesn't animate us, doesn't make us. Come on, order my steps. In your Torah, dear Yah, he said, uh, my steps, the course of my life, we will see what the wicked are doing, and we will alter the righteous course because of the wicked. We will hear what they're doing, and we will alter. He said, my feet nearly slip. Why? Why? He didn't say because of the beauty of the wicked. He said because of the foolish. Because of the evil. A foolish one says no to Yah. The fool says in his heart, uh, no to you, Yah. They don't say yes yeah to the ways of Yah. They don't know how to be kindly affectionate. They don't know what that is. They don't know how to consider one another. He's not watching the wicked and I almost lost the course. I almost lost the inspiration of Torah. My mind wasn't gravitating to Torah. But I, why can, how can a man that owned everything, that he had servants by the thousands, how, who were the wicked that he will look at and nearly slip? Tell me. In essence, this mushel, this parable, it tells me that with all the great riches of Yah, what Yahshua has done, there is always this flirtation with the word. We always thinking that there is something greater. And there is nothing greater than Torah. Nothing. Nothing greater than the ordering of your steps by his wisdom. There's nothing. You let the wicked pollute it. You let those that are vile and unclean pollute you, that they, they are not going to put your eyes on you. And some of your daughters you talk too damn much, bust the telephone up. That's your problem. You don't know how to love nobody. You don't know a damn thing about love. I will, my friend. Click the damn thing or bust it up. Bust it up. You won't talk, talk to, to a sister. Hallelujah. She tell you how not to be lazy and slothful. That's right. Boy, that, that uh, mama, that formula, that little I got, she came in weighing 62 pounds. She, she was down to 45. So when I weighed her last night, when she weighed herself, she was just 51. So she dropped from 60, 67, 62 pounds to 45, 63 pounds. Ooh. Mm. Shimri, we need to bring the camera in there, man. You understand? 
I'm fighting like a monster. And she comes in there, Dad? Oh, I guess that donut last night put a little weight on you. You, went, you were back at 51 pounds. When you weighed, what did she weigh, 51? 52 pounds. You put on seven pounds, huh? Who? I'd take that any day, though. From 65, 63 to 45, and just eat a little something, and I'm, I'm kicking back six more pounds. I'd take that. I'll take that any day. I'll buy that formula. I want to know. I, maybe we need for you to start a little class, all right? Can you design one for everyone? Teach me. I don't mind you teaching me. All right. Hallelujah. He said, for I was envious. I'm envy of no man. I bless any man when his gift, gift is beautiful. I appreciate a man when his gift is beautiful. I appreciate him. I don't try to challenge his intellectual proudness, his properties. I, li I listen to him. Hallelujah. I listen to the man. I was talking with an engineer the other day. He says to me, Riyak, I have in the degree of what we call well, I've done well because I'm an engineer for the oil industry and I work in the field, so I have. Do you understand a man's mind like that that uh, has the ability to calculate He's a man of the diaspora. I can tell you he had a beautiful spirit. He has the ability to calculate, to analyze, to sense, different shapes, form. All. He, he, he can calculate a, a, a metrium of things. And we finished talking about 30, 40 minutes. He said, I've learned more listening to you, man, in this time. I can't tell you what I've learned. I appreciate it. Is it all right if I come see you? I said, come on. I'll let him come see you. I like people like that. I can tell. Hallelujah. Almost slip because you're envious of the wicked. Isn't that a mess? Hallelujah. I want to give you something here. That if we trust Yah, I will trust in Yah's Torah. I will trust in Yahshua HaMashiach. That weed says here. This is one of the most excellent things we can garner or gain in our lives. In Psalms 85.13. It says, righteousness or sadiq shall go before Yah. That's what goes before Yah. Righteousness is character. He says, and shall set us, we, if we walk in the righteousness of Torah, he shall set us in the way, I like this, in the way of his steps. Do we allow the righteousness, the covering of the righteous garment, the cloak of Yah, to go before us? Uh, that's what he says. And he shall set us, he shall establish us in his derek, uh, or halach, or derek halach, in the way. Yeah? He says, what way? Of his steps, of his steps, of his fa'am, of his order of life. Uh, he is life. He is the substance of life. So if we allow the righteousness of Yah, the love of Torah, the fruit of the rock to go before us, He shall order, set us in His steps. We shall walk in the steps of our Abba. Yahshua did. Everything Yah commanded Him, He obeyed it. Delightfully, with great wisdom. Hallelujah. I don't want to devise my ways. But that's what we do. We devise our own righteousness. We are far superior than anyone else when it comes to righteousness. I say to people, I don't care who's speaking up here. Whatever sin they identify, that's me, y'all. Because if I've broken one, I've broken them all. It's a wicked generation that thinks in its own heart that it is right. I'm right. You're wrong. No. I'd rather be like the one that was the publican. And not like the, the Pusham. That he smote himself and said, Whoa, a wicked thing I am. And the one says, I'm righteous. I fast twice a week. I got my plaster. That's a wicked mind. I'm nicer to you than you are to me. You haven't done a damn thing for me. So how nice are you to me? 
I'm much sweeter than you. You're not sweet at all, hell. Even if a, if a wife or woman, she's a gift from your precious wife, she adds damn years to a man. She, she calls life to emanate from him. I'm alive and I look alive too. I work hard too. I'm alive and I feel alive and I look alive and I'm energized and I have energy when I don't have energy. What do you do? I make myself have energy. I make myself do things when I can't do it. I do. Sit around the house, my show many times. She said, Get up. Why don't you go out and get my heart? I came to holler, Go out and do something. Sit around here. Get out of the house, boy. He tells me the story. Get out of here. Sitting around. We didn't sit around when I was kids in the house. You got up and got out of there. You weren't laying down in no bed after that. That's a fact. You crawled on the tree somewhere. Yowza get not not you or yowza. You see, you think this young little boy that you knew that he he's a didn't hear a hear that stuff. That yowza get up. Now I'm telling yowza, yowza. Hallelujah. I'm gonna finish this. Give me a few minutes. Can I give you some great wisdom tonight? This is pure wisdom speaking from the bosom of the beloved of David, Shalomo, Proverbs 16 and 9. He says to us, man's love, his own heart, devise his own ways. And your own heart, if you got an evil heart, your ways are evil. You got a corrupt heart, your ways, is, they are corrupt. He says, but Almighty Yahweh directs his steps. He directs the steps of a, a man now. Of an ish, strong man. He directs his steps. How in Torah, order his steps. He orders his life because if he is life only, he knows the course of life. Only Yah can order that. We can't get envious of the wicked. The wicked doesn't, they don't impress me. I'm not envious of them. It's not that we're not going to be tried. We think we see in this delusional concept, in this image, we think that they're doing it. They're pitiful. They're pitiful. See, they'll walk up to you and say, oh man, you look so nice. Oh girl, you look nice. We don't understand that. We devise all of our ways. We devise our anger. No one did that to you. You did it. Well, she said that to me. Well, it shows what's in you. It just shows you how damn wicked you are. So you want to condemn everyone with you. Get your damn wicked heart right. Let the Torah order the right. So everyone is wrong. Shalomo, he gives us. I want to close in a minute. But there's something I want to show us from the Brit Hadassah to cause your heart to rejoice. The simplicity, like I said, this is the two part. I don't know if I get back to the second part. I'm not going to promise you that. All right. But I may get back to the ordering because that's important as well. You got to understand both concepts, both words, all the words you got to understand. He gives us this. He says, it's not how wise a man is, how much he has. You, you know, those kids, they sent those young men, they sent to Vietnam. They were back then. The mentality was different than what it was in Iraq. Those were men at 18 years old, 17, they were men. They were men. They were men back then. They were not little boys. Come on now. They were men. A lot of them cats, man, 16, they're leaving from the country south and they're moving north. Uh, jobs and they looked like they were 25, 30 years old. And they were 17 years old, young men. Physically, they were strong and built. And so it's, this is what Shalomo, in all of his strength of his kingdom power, he come to this conclusion. In Proverbs 20, 24, he says, a geber, a warrior, a geber man's steps. He's talking about the mitzat. He said, when one is a geber man, a warrior, he talks about the mitzat. The mitzat. He is saying this, can I tell you? Let me finish reading this and I will tell you what he's saying. He said, the geber man's steps are from Yah. 
Well, then what is he talking about his mitzvah? He is saying, you hear me say, dress in cover down. He is saying that the process of that man's life, as he marches to the beat of Yah's Torah, he marches toward the shalom, the peace, the covenant of Yah's assurance of rest, his shafat in his heart. That's what mitzat means. That's what a warrior does. That's what a warrior fights for. He fights for peace. And so he, he, his process of life is different than, the, than a soldier man. So he mitzat, he marched to the beat. He marched to the beat of shalom. He's always proceeding and marching to ascertain the shalom. What do his achim is holding? We so easily offended. We we don't have no love. You don't have no perfect. You don't have nothing perfect in you when it comes to that. You don't offend me. And especially when I when I look at this generation, you say that this one is wrong, and then I look at you. You that that doesn't offend me. I want to close with this here. And yours will one day. I'll get to the next part. This out of the mouth of Kepha, as he speaks concerning the steps of Torah. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. And Kepha says, for even, he says, now I want you to hear me, for even hereunto were we called. This is the purpose. This is what has been ordained by Yah, for even thereunto you were called. Why? Because Yeshua HaMashiach also suffered for us. Now, we've been called even unto this process, even to this course of life. He suffered for us, leaving us an example, a pattern, a tasnuth, a tasnith, a pattern that we should follow his steps. Before he began to talk like this, he began to tell me how they revile him, he reviled not. So someone rebuke you, and you're going to rebuke everyone, you, you're just flat out wicked. I, I was telling one the other day, there's a woman that she harassed me. She's a, I'm not saying this to be offensive, but she, I looked at the woman, this old fat woman. She's got a weasel looking husband. He looks like a little wimp. And that's just a fact. He has no character of strength in him. I can look at him. And this is what this silly woman says. She tells me I'm going to hell. But she said, preacher man, she called me preacher man. She said, preacher man, you can help somebody. You, you, you just got to get that Holy Ghost thing right and allow Jesus. I said, damn you, Jesus. Damn the dog. She said, preacher, man, you can help somebody, though. You, 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 you can help somebody. But she, she's messed up already. Can I tell you why she's messed up? She listened to me. And she's going to start scratching her head. She's going to have to go back and listen again. <sighs> Shut him off. Then her mind is going to be troubled. She's going to have to go back again and listen. Ooh. This man is a mess. Then she's going to find herself listening a little longer, a little longer, and she's going to find herself hooked. She's going to find the, she's going to find the hook in the, in the jaw. And then I'm going to skin that heifer. Now I'm not gonna, she's not a heifer, the cow. She's a big cow. She's not a heifer. She's, she's not clean at all. I hope you're listening, cow. Hallelujah. He left us an example that we should follow his steps. Whose steps are we following? We should follow his assure. We should follow his steps. We should follow his steps. Why? Who did no sin? You that are without sin cast the first stone. You're so pure, you wicked clown. Why? When he was reviled, he reviled not. And when he suffered, he threatened not. But committed himself unto him that judged righteously. That's what we do. Commit ourselves unto Yah. He judged right. He'll take. Don't worry about the situation. When people do me wrong, I don't worry about trying to get them back in there. Well, okay, you, no big deal. I'm straight. He says, who? His own self for us bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Why? Why? That we, being dead to sin, should live to his righteousness but whose stripes you were not is you were Rafa restored back to the steps of Yah's way all of my steps in the Torah 
Teach me, guide me every day. Senor, act upon me, I pray. What are my steps? Oh, yeah. May the riches of your rest upon you all. May strengthen your bosom. May the word of your store be a great delight. Cause your heart to rejoice greatly. You are friends. We do rock you all. Our enemies, come back, please. We need you. Let us stand to our feet. Ya Barak Yisrael. Hallelujah. In all things we do barak you are upon your sure's name. We pray for your nation, your people to rafa to heal. We pray for your people scattered abroad, our friends, our enemies. We pray for them all. Your sure's mighty name. Give us guidance. Take our friends down the highway safely in your sure's name. And grant unto us the safety of your comfort, your covenant riches. In your sure's mighty name we do pray. I'll cry. Hallelujah. 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 Ya Barak Yisrael.